If you are watching this video on YouTube, would you do us a favor and would you like, share, and subscribe? Share this with your friends. They need to hear this message. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked Podcast. I am so glad that you were with me this week. This week, we are following up a really incredible interview that we did last week with Ray Comfort, and we've got an exciting guest on with you this week. His name is Paul Hastings, and we are gonna talk more about the gospel and God and testimonies and what God is doing through his people. But before we get into that, I wanna say thank you to our sponsor, CTC Math. They're a great online math program. If you guys are looking for a math curriculum, go to ctcmath.com and try them out for free, ctcmath.com. Well, you guys, welcome back to the podcast. I am here, like I said, with my friend, Paul Hastings. And Paul and I met, I don't know, a few years ago, I guess it was. Um, I guess, Paul, it was probably at a state leaders conference, I, I'm thinking. I'm trying to remember where yeah, we first met. I, I don't even know. I think so. Uh, it's been a while. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. you are involved in homeschool leadership um, in the state of Texas, right? Where That's right. Everything is bigger. Everything is bigger in Texas. That's Everything right. really is bigger in Texas. It's kind of, <laughs> kind of shocking. You drive through my, my, my brother-in-law, my brother and sister-in-law live there. And we went there and we were driving down the street and I'm like, what is that massive building? And they're like, oh, that's the high school. I'm like, of course that's the high school because everything's bigger in Texas. And it's like this massive high school. It's so funny. Um, so yeah, you are from the state of Texas. Um, Paul, welcome to the, the podcast. Tell us a little bit about you and your family and your ministry, what the Lord is doing through you. Yeah, thanks, Yvette. Thanks for having me on. It's a, it is a pleasure. And, you know, I think the first time I uh, met up you guys, I think maybe I met Garrett actually at a Christian Worldview Film Festival maybe uh, eight years ago, possibly. Oh. Uh, and I didn't even okay. know that it happened. But later on, I was going through my business cards, actually, and I think I found his card that way. So uh, it was, oh, it how was funny. surreal. Yeah, <laughs> it was surreal. But yeah, so uh, I live here in Texas, uh, born and raised, I live close in the Austin area. Uh, my wife and I, we have three kids, ages five, three, and one, and we've got a new one on the way uh, due sometime in April. Yeah, yeah, that's so awesome. So exciting. Big, big homeschool families. Everything's bigger in Texas. So <laughs> That's right. Even our homeschools. Big families. Even your homeschools. That's right. So, you know, like I said, last week we had Ray Comfort on the podcast, and it was such a powerful episode where we talked throughout the week about the life-changing message of the gospel. And so this week, I want to talk to you. We wanted to have you kind of trail behind him. Not that you do trail behind Ray Comfort, but we wanted to have you follow up, uh, follow up with you to talk about testimonies and how the testimonies that we have as Christians are also life-changing to other people and they help draw others to Christ. And so you have a, a podcast that I listen to um, on a regular basis. As a matter of fact, I'm always so bummed out when your season ends. It's the Compelled Podcast. And it is so powerful. You talk about what God is doing through people's lives. And it's all about testimonies and, and people's stories of God's work in their lives. And so whenever your season ends, I'm like, Oh, I can't wait till the next season. And I'm always checking my phone to see when the next podcast episode is going to come and when the next season is going to start up again. But it's been such a powerful tool, even for me to just see God's faithfulness. And so um, we're going to talk about this, about that this week. But before we get into that, I want you to tell us the story about you. Talk to us about Paul Hastings. I know you were homeschooled growing up. You homeschool your kids. Um, just talk to us about your ministry and what God has done in your life? Yeah, great question. You know, uh, so actually, it's so interesting. Being a podcaster today is actually tightly connected to being homeschooled, actually. So this crazy story. <laughs> so uh, it was something like 30 years ago. My mother immigrated to the United States when she was 17, and she came from Thailand. Uh, she came to the U.S., didn't speak a word of English at all. And so when she arrived, I think she was uh, she was probably supposed to be in 11th grade, but she was a bad student in Thailand, came to the U.S., right? And so she enrolls in a high school here and was a terrible student here as well, partly because, like, you know, she was just bad at, you know, a bad student. But also, she couldn't understand the language either. And, uh, you know, she couldn't understand anything that people were saying. And so eventually she dropped out of high school uh, and just enrolled at her local community college. Then you fast forward a few years later, and my dad... Uh, he met my mom, and the funny story about my dad is he, too, dropped out of high school 
Uh, and so he only had his GED. And so these two folks meet each other. They both have their GEDs. They're both high school dropouts. Uh, and at this point in time, my mom had become a Christian and they get married. And my dad had heard about homeschooling back in the 80s. And uh, it, it wasn't legal in Texas at the time, uh, but there neither was there a lot of like talk about it either. It was just kind of a non-factor. And before he had ever gotten married, he had thought like, wow, this homeschooling idea, this sounds really cool. Maybe, maybe we should try that out someday. So he gets married. And, uh, you know, my, my siblings and I, we're, we end up being raised by these two high school dropouts. And, you know, normally we'd kind of put together the, oh, that's a recipe for disaster, right? Like, you know, they're totally unqualified. Like who, you know, what are these yeah. people thinking? Uh, but in the end, it was actually, it was really successful for us as an entire family. Uh, my brother ended up getting his PhD at Berkeley University in sociology. Today, he's a professor of sociology at Colorado State University. Um, mm -hmm. my sister, she ended up getting her associate's degree in computer science I think like five months after she graduated from homeschooling. Uh, and then I was homeschooled also. Uh, and I ended up taking the long route. I took, I took, uh, eight years to cram a four year degree program. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, I know that takes a special skill, but, but yeah, so I, I too got my degree as well. So, you know, again, all three of us homeschooled K through 12 all the way, never spent any time in a classroom, a regular classroom. Uh, but we yeah. really thrived with homeschooling, even though our parents were, you know, on paper unqualified to teach us. It was yeah. a really excellent thing. So that's a beautiful story. I love, love, love that encouragement because so many of us think, well, you know, I, I, I mean, I'm one of those who just thought, man, I'm not qualified to teach my kids. Are you kidding me? I hated school. I was a horrible student too in high school. Yeah. And uh, you know, here I am, <laughs> homeschooling in year twelve, and um, yeah. you know, doing a whole podcast about homeschooling, made a movie about it. And it's not because I am so good at homeschooling. It's because God has chosen to use me to. Uh, speak life and to impact yeah. my kids' lives through homeschooling and family discipleship. And I'm so grateful for that. So let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. What we do at IEW is break through the, the noise of the grammar and the writing prompts. And we say, this is what you do step by step. And I've witnessed it over and over again, both watching Andrew teach and hearing from parents, this is the best writing program. We've made it so easy and made it really affordable. So any mom can teach writing to their children using our course, and we guarantee it. To try three weeks of free lessons, visit IEW.com. We are back with Paul. Um, I love that testimony of your mom and dad and just how, you know, it, God uses those of us who feel so inadequate and so ill-equipped to do his work and we've talked about this so many times on the podcast that all we have to be willing to do is say, yes, yes, Lord, we'll do this. We will do what you've called us to do because in the end, he gets all the glory for it. We never get to say, look at how great I was. You know, if, if I, if I had a doctorate in education, I could be like, yeah, of course I can homeschool my kids. This is what I do. This is my thing. But no, that's not how God created me. And so he gets all the glory in the end, because all I can do is say, okay, Lord, you did this. I didn't do this. And I trusted you and God just did his work. And so it's the same with testimonies and the testimonies that God gives us. And that's an incredible testimony just simply about homeschooling. But I want to talk about testimonies too, in regards to what God has done in other people's lives. And I was um, just looking at some scripture as we were preparing for this episode. And one of the ones that really stuck out to me was this. It's Psalm 35 verse 28. Uh, it's actually verse 27 and 28. And it says this, let those who delight in my righteousness shout for joy and be glad and say evermore, great is the Lord who delights in the welfare of his servant. Then my tongue shall tell of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. And what I love about that is it's not just about giving praise to God, but it's about sharing what he has done in our lives. So I would love for you to share some stories with us because you're in a world of the compelled podcast where you get to talk to people all the time about what God has done in their lives. I would love for you to share with us some of those stories. And later um, this week, actually on Thursday, I think we're going to share a little clip from the compelled podcast so that people can get a little taste of it. And we'll have you intro that, but talk to us about some of these testimonies that God has allowed you to be privy to. Sure. Sure. You know, so we the way that we started this podcast was about five years ago. My wife and I, we were talking about things and ways that we could serve the Lord. 
And one of the things that we realized is that because she grew up in Kansas, I lived in Texas, and we had completely different friend groups. And we happened to just know an abnormally large number of people because, you know, our entire lives, like, you know, melded together in one, one piece. And so we just knew so many people, and we realized that so many of them had really unique and intriguing testimonies and stories how God had changed or transformed their life. And so we launched our podcast, Compelled, as basically a way to highlight folks that we personally knew that had really powerful stories, but maybe weren't famous. You know, they didn't have a platform. They didn't have a, a podcast. Over there. They were just regular folks doing, you know, kingdom mm -hmm. work. Uh, and we just thought, man, this, this is just be really encouraging. When I heard it, I think it would be encouraging for someone else to hear it. Uh, one of those stories that comes to mind right now is a, a lady that I knew growing up as a kid, and her name was Carol Everett, and she was an abortion clinic owner. She owned three different mm -hmm. clinics back in the 70s uh, before Roe versus Wade, actually, or maybe it was shortly after. I can't recall. And she she profited off of thousands of abortions. In fact, I think they did about 30,000 abortions at her clinics. And at the time, she wow. would have said that she was a Christian. In fact, she went to church every single Sunday. She kept a Bible at her abortion clinic. Every morning, she would wake up and say, Dear Jesus, please don't let any women die in my clinic today. And then she would wow. tithe 10% of every dollar that she made to her local church. So obviously, incredibly misguided, right? Like she had no, no, real, no real moral scruples about abortion at all. And so, yeah. and so this lady, though, like she has this incredible testimony, though, of how one day— God sends this guy into her office, and he starts talking with her about some legal issues that she's having with one of her co-owners. And it's incredible that God uses this arbitrator to basically be the, the impetus for changing her entire perspective, not only of abortion, but of Christianity itself, and it ultimately brings her into the Christian faith. And today, wow. Carol's like this 70-year-old lady. She's still working on the front lines of like trying to save babies now. Uh, but unless you knew her story— You'd have no yeah. idea. She was just this old lady, right? You have no clue at all. And, and she was just someone that I knew growing up. And we were like, wow, what if we just shared that story with others? And so that's one of the stories that we started with. That's so cool. How do you get your guests? Because I mean, I know you said you, you and your wife knew people, but obviously you don't know every single person sure. that you have on the podcast. How do these people come to you? Yeah, great question. So, you know, a lot of the stories that we find now, these are friends of friends, or sometimes they will be a cold mm -hmm. call. Uh, one other story that comes to my mind, this was a friend of a friend. Her name was uh, Hannah Overton. And actually, I've got a photo of her right here. We have these little cards that we have. So for those that are watching on YouTube, you can see this little card here. Yeah. And Hannah Overton, she was a homeschool mother, grew up in Texas, lived in Texas. And she had, I think she had six kids, and they were in the process of adopting their sixth. And uh, unfortunately, this little boy that they were adopting, he died when he was about five years old. He died while they were in her care, in their care. Uh, and it was just terrible, traumatic uh, a lot of stuff happened. CPS got involved and ended up accusing Hannah of murdering her foster child, which was, you know, completely bogus, not true, not at all. Uh, and so they went to trial because Hannah was a believer. She knew that the Lord was going to save her in her day of, you know, of, of torment here. Uh, and of course, you know, like she's just going through all this anguish. Like this is her son, right? The boy that they were adopting, he had died and now she's being accused. Yeah. I mean, just crazy stuff's going on. And so at, at the at the trial, all this crazy stuff happens. The prosecutor was basically corrupt uh, and basically withheld a whole bunch of evidence from the jury. Uh, they had a special uh, witness that they kept in a closet, didn't even let the witness like testify to the jury what was going on. So the jury had no clue. And so in, in, at the end, the jury has to come back with a verdict, guilty or not guilty. And so they say, well, guilty. And in that case, in Texas law, at that point, the only two options are either death or life in prison. That's the only options the jury was given. And so they chose life in prison for this mom. And so Hannah is just shocked leaving the, the courtroom like, you know, Lord, where were you? Like, I was praying. I thought you were going to rescue me here. I'm innocent. Yeah. What, what in the world's going on? And she was sent to life in prison with other, you know, hardened criminals, rapists and murderers and terrible folks are in there. And she's there for seven years asking herself, Lord, where were you when I needed you? And then one day while she's in the prison, she has this unique revelation. She understands and realizes, oh my goodness, God placed me in prison because I'm uniquely qualified to share the gospel with mm -hmm. other women who would never listen to someone from the outside, but they would listen to me. And so that began this, this revival in the Texas prison system as Hannah began having 
Bible studies and witnessing to other women in prison. And they would then have Bible studies with other women in prison. And soon thousands of women, their lives were transformed in the Texas prison system. Eventually, the prosecutor left office, a new prosecutor came in, found the physical box of evidence that the previous prosecutor had hidden, which showed Hannah's yeah. innocence. Uh, the Te Texas Court of Criminal Appeals reversed the, the ruling and they allowed Hannah to go free. She's been exonerated. And so she's free today. But that story, again, like this is just a friend of a friend. We got that connection, a friend of a friend. Wow. And we were like, oh my goodness, this is a story that the world needs to hear. Man, that story of Hannah Overton is so amazing. That was actually one of my favorite episodes. Um, I don't know. I have a lot of favorite episodes, but that was one of them that was so powerful as we listened to it. And the thing that really struck me about hers is, again, as we said before, she was just a mom. She was a homeschool mom yeah. and how the, her community came around her. And I remember her, she was talking about how her friends homeschooled her kids for her. I mean, that's incredible. Like that's incredible sacrifice. And her family just hung on in hopes that God would just reclaim her life and renew what had been lost. And he did. And now I, I would love for you to tell really quickly about where she's at today. Yeah, and yeah. people can go and listen to this episode, of course, um, and, and get the whole story because it's absolutely fascinating. But where is she today? What is she doing today? Yeah, great question. So when she was originally sent to prison, she, again, I admit she had five kids at that time, right? And like the youngest yeah. one, she was actually still nursing the youngest one yeah. when the jury came back and said guilty. And she was sent to, you know, she was locked up and just sent away. No goodbyes. She didn't say goodbye to her yeah. family because she literally thought like, you know, of course the jury's going to say I'm innocent. <laughs> And right. so, so she left her family for seven years. And when I interviewed her, actually, what was so surreal is like, you know, she had left that little baby, right? And now that when she was set free, that little baby was like, you know, eight years old now. But when my wife and I interviewed Hannah, she actually had a new baby. And Hannah is mm -hmm. actually the first woman in modern Texas history who has ever been exonerated to still have a child off after prison. Uh, because wow. all other scenarios in modern history, so we're talking like the last hundred years, all other yeah. women that's ever happened to have either like lost their fertility by the time they get out of prison, you know, because they were exonerated, but it was too late or just right. like, you know, just, you know, it's, it's crazy stuff there, but it was just so yeah. surreal to see Hannah. So today she's got this ministry. She's working with other prisoners. They have a letter writing ministry and they do Christmas gifts for other prisoners and their children. Uh, a really powerful testimony that she's got. And you can learn all about that back at our website if you just search for her story with Hannah Overton at our website. Yeah, so cool. We'll put links to that in the show notes as we always do. We're out of time. I, I can't believe that. I, I, it just seems like we just started talking, but we're out of time right now. So we're going to come back on Wednesday. We're going to talk more about just our testimonies and how it impacts God's kingdom. So we'll be back with you guys on Wednesday. Where can people find out more about Compelled? They can search for Compelled on their favorite podcast app, or they can go to compelledpodcast.com. Okay, sounds great. Thank you so much, so, so much for being with me today, Paul. I really appreciate it. You guys, um, please leave a review. If you've not yet done that, go to all, uh, Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast app you listen to where you can leave a review and leave a review for this podcast and share it with a friend. People need to be encouraged. You guys, we live in a dark world where we need encouragement from one another. And so this week we are talking about God's goodness and what he's doing in the lives of his people. So please share this with your friends and leave a review. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you back here on Wednesday. Bye. Over the past six years, you, the Christian homeschool community, have provided generous support to the Schoolhouse Rocked ministry, and it's had an enormous impact for the kingdom of God. Recently, we've spent some time taking inventory of what's been accomplished in this time because of your generous support. As you know, Schoolhouse Rocked, The Homeschool Revolution, the feature-length documentary, was released in November and is now available on DVD and streaming. We've had the privilege of showing the movie at conferences, churches, theaters, and homeschool events. And we've been blessed to hear the testimonies of how God is using it to impact families around the world. This show, The Schoolhouse Rocked Podcast, is in its fifth season with over 485 episodes and well over a million downloads and video views so far. We also launched the Homeschool Insights Podcast this year. This daily podcast provides biblical homeschool encouragement in under 10 minutes for moms on the move. And to date, we've published over 130 episodes. 
We also offer the free Homeschool Survival Kit, a 70-page resource to assist and encourage homeschooling families. And we continue to offer access to the Homegrown Generation Family Expo. Now, we are in the early stages of work on a new movie, and we need your help. While we can't give many details yet, we expect this new film to have a huge impact in our culture. But projects like this simply can't be done without massive support from the community. So we're asking you to join in this important work. Visit schoolhouserocked.com support and make a one-time or monthly donation that will change lives and hearts for eternity. That's schoolhouserocked.com support.